lesson, we are going to be looking at properties of exponents and radicals. So for the first problem that we have up today, I have 3 divided by 32 and two, to the 2 fifths to the 1 half. Now, in order to simplify this, what you're going to do as you're going to remember that if you have to multiply anything, usually it has to have the same base. But here we don't have to worry about this. What we're going to do is take 3 to the 1 half, which is the square root of 3, and 32 to the 2 fifths, and multiply it by 1 half. When we do that, the twos cancel, and we get the square root of three over the fifth root of 32. Now, if you were to put the fifth root of 32 into your calculator, you would get a number. <coughs> but if you don't have a calculator handy, factoring 32, you would find that the uh, two, to the fifth power is equal to 32. Therefore, the fifth root of 32 is two, so our answer is going to be the square root of three over two. Pretty easy. Now, they get a little more complicated as we go along. All right. Here, I, you can, if you would like, which is what I did, there's all different types of ways you can do this, but what I did was I took and separated this out. So I had the fourth root of 81, the fourth root of a to the eighth, and the fourth root of b to the fifth. <coughs> now, if you remember correctly, when we take a root of something, if I take and say, let's do the easy one first over here, this is the same as saying b times b times b times b times b. The fourth root, if I take four of them out, I get one with one left over. So we end up with the fourth root of b with a b out here. The same thing goes here. There are eight A's in here. I can take two groups of four out, which would give me A squared. Now we have 81 to look at. So you're thinking, what can I do with 81? Well, when I have something that looks like this, sometimes I just go ahead and go, okay, 81, if I factor 81, well, um, I know that nine times nine is 81. So that means that I can stick a three here and then get something here and put a three here and I would get a nine here. Well, three times nine is 27. So that means three to 81 is 27. Of course, you've got a calculator on my calculator right here. But three into nine is three. So I have four threes here. This means that the fourth root of 81 is going to be three. So my final answer is going to be 3a squared times b times the fourth root of b. Here's another problem. Here I've got the fifth root, oops, fifth root of 7 over the fifth root of 16 x cubed. Now, we don't usually have a problem with uh, radicals in the numerator, but we do have problems of radicals in the denominator. So I need to get him out of there. 
And in order to do that, I notice here that 16, it just so happens that, um, let's see my little notes here. 16, I end up with, um, two into 16 is eight, two into eight is four, two into four is two. I have one, two, three, four, I need one more. So if I have another fifth root of two, and here I need two, so if I have another, uh, if I have an x squared, I will end up with five twos and five x's. Well, if I do that to the bottom, I have to do it to the top also. So I have five, two, x squared. Next, what I'm going to do is um, go ahead and I have a fifth root. So I can go ahead and multiply both of these. So we're going to end up with the fifth root of two times seven is 14 x squared for our top. On the bottom, I notice here, remember I told you there's five of those here. So I can take, um, if I take the fifth root of that, I'm gonna end up with two. Taking the one of these out, because there's five of them, I'm gonna end up with X. So now, I don't even need to do anything because I have two times two times two times two over here, and this is a two over here, so there's a there's a, just a two left. I can take five of those out. And I get the fifth root of that number is going to be a two. Don't even have to do a lot of multiplying. All right. Again, you're not allowed to have radicals in the, de um, in the denominator. So here we're going to use conjugate pairs. But before we do that, Let's go over here to look at this conjugate pair I've got set up here. We're going to multiply that using FOIL. So if I take x times x, I get x squared. Then I take x and multiply it by the square root of 10. So I have plus x times the square root of 10. Here we're going to multiply negative x and get x times the square root of 10. And then the square root of 10 times the square root of 10 is going to be 10. Negative times positive, of course, is a negative. That cancels out, and we end up with x squared minus 10. This is how we get this thing out of the denominator. So here we go. I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by the conjugate. So the first thing I get is negative 4x times 1 plus the square root of x. Multiplying by the conjugate, I got, remember that this cancels out. So all we have to worry about is the square of the first term and the square of the second term. So the square of the first term is going to be a 1 the square of the second term is going to be an x, and then I have a negative sign to stick in there. So that's all you have to do is remember the conjugate. And it cancels itself out. All right, and then the final answer of this is going to be, oh, we have the final answer, it's right here negative 4x times the square root of x minus x plus the square root of x divided by 1 minus x. And there you go. Please make sure when you're doing your workbook problems that you show your work just like I have shown my work here.